Zachary Fowler, and that's Amos Rodriguez, and this is the Arctic Blast Survival Challenge. Polar Vortex is coming to the north. Yeah, it's quite frozen. I got a flag. And yeah! Oh, don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it. Got it. Catfish! Oh my goodness, I'm knocking out the species game. Mm. Just the camera is just like froze right over. Uh, was your camera still sitting over there? Seven forty two. Slept pretty good. But there's fish to be caught and stuff to be built and adventures to be had, and nobody ever has those when you stay in bed. Let's go see what the world looks like outside. Uh, it's a winter wonderland. A little Oh, I don't know, three inches of the most light, powdery stuff. That's nice. It was so warm in there. Lots of uh, everything melted all the way. Just kept melting and dripping. Now it's frozen. Guess what? You got a fish? Uh-uh. No? I took the thing and I didn't have the, I didn't have the hand. Oh! Hand. I just lost it, man. <laughs> you got a little bit of snow in it before I covered it up last night. I'll leave those in there for now. now I'll take my jiffy that I hooked to the drill out. This thing is a beast. It can drill through anything just non-stop for days on that one battery. Unlike the uh, cordless drills, which is nice for the thin ice. But my drill, cordless drill, isn't that powerful? And I found like, I went through multiple batteries yesterday and it was and it gets to the end and it sticks. So I don't think it's exactly set up right for that. through this hole right here because it was smaller we see and it? it went straight through no it, the visibility is not that good i bet we can get it with the aqua view with maybe a trouble hook we might be able to see it because it's got the the yellow rope on top that's right that's cool let's check it out see if we can see it i'm curious if it'll show up on the garmin it's standing up or not whoa that makes the hole hard to use it's uh you know what we'll make a hole next to it because we're gonna fish it out of this hole if we get lucky enough it's right there. <clears throat> oh, that is so much better than the drill, the hand drill one. That thing is so slow compared to this thing. Loving it. Let's see if she's in there. Oh, I think that's it. That's so cool, it looks like it's stuck in the mud and it's leaned over just a teeniest bit. But I also haven't really used the new Aqua View yet, but once or twice, so I really want to try this too. I think we'll give it a try with a straight down image, since it looked like the handle was sticking up. Yeah, there it is, look. You can see the handle, it, it, oh, yeah, right the there. ribbon floating. Yeah. All right, well. Let's rig something up and then see if we can't work together and bob it out of there. All right, we got a lure. We got some bank line. Use this and the camera. See if we can't get down there and snag it. Just gonna do a tiny bowling. Put in and a little backup knot so she doesn't come undone. Now that I can see that the little handle is floating up, I don't even know if I need to uh, you know, see what I'm doing. It's right between the two holes, isn't it? It looks like it is. I'm just going to drill a hole right in the middle. Set the 
camera up in this hole. Okay, now we just gotta hook it. Hook it real good. I mean, that says four feet, that says four feet that you're pointing right there. So one, two, three, uh, we need one more hole. Whoa. We're like, it really glided over, didn't it? In front of it? Oh, you're right there. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Dance it around a little lower. A little lower? Yeah. You're right, there? right inside of it, I think. I'm inside? Yeah, jig it up and down inside of there. There it goes. It's moving. Here we go, here it's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming. Oh, she's up. She's free. J for technology. <laughs> yeah, right. And there it is. All right. Both hooks. Too. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have to cut that off. Look at that. So between the Aquaview and the Garmin, we got the $40 spud bar out. And two uh, survivalists. Yeah, <laughs> and two survivalists. It took $6,000 worth of equipment and two survivalists to get it. <laughs> to get it out. Although, I have to say, I mean, sure, we could have dropped a treble down and, and assumed that it was sticking up and things like that and kept working at it. We, I bet we would have gotten it, but... Yeah, but it would have taken us a lot more... Oh, man, we would have had to punch so many holes and we would have never known. Yeah. In the end, we probably would have just gotten frustrated and been like, I give up. But, like, yeah. because we were able to see exactly where it was. Yeehaw. Now we can yeah. bring it with us because I definitely wanted that with us. We're going to go down the lake. And down there, there was more open water, so I really want to be testing it as we go. I don't want to go through. So let's let's set a couple again over here. And then we'll, then we'll go make breakfast and then head that way. There we go, found my holes. Let's put the uh, this one back down. Nothing on these yet, but there's hoping. What a beautiful little setup. It turned out so good for just whipping it out the other morning. And if you're just tuning in, this is episode three, so you might want to go back and start from the beginning. There's a prequel, and then there's the shelter build in episode one, and more about this jig board I designed and made in episode two. I'm so psyched about that. All right. Another one on the set. Plop her in there. All right, let's go make some breakfast and figure out what to do with this sled. Yeah. She is we taking two of us to move it because it's it's just plowing up snow and clunking up on the bottom. The temperature is just right that there's like some slushy stuff on the top of the ice here that's sticking to the bottom. So we got to double team it. Ready? Uh, and it's slick as all get out. Me too. All right, there we go. All right. It's just plowing up piles of snow. If you know how to fix this, let me know. It's, it only happens when it's just the right temperature. You know what? Let's just leave it. Let's leave it here, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the snow dog out. We don't need it. We'll leave it here, it's fine. Get in my jacket, my gloves. Wait, is that a line up over there? That's one of the poles is up. Somebody got yeah, right there. You got a bite, man. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so you did have a bite. It. Yeah. Take a little break from the edit and say today's video is brought to you by Fabric by Gerber Life. Life insurance made easy. We've done a couple sponsorships for them before. I signed up for Fabric. It only takes 10 minutes to sign up for life insurance with Fabric. Fabric was designed by parents for parents and you could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. You might think to yourself, oh, hey, Fowler, you do all kinds of crazy stuff, hammocking with grizzly bears down below, going swimming in Hawaii and spearing tuna, and maybe there's sharks around. Yeah, it makes sense to me for that reason, but also because, what, 4,000 people a year, we looked it up, die from choking. Nobody saw that coming, right? And what was the other one? That uh, more people die from coconuts Matt just looked it up, then sharks. So when it comes to scary, risky things, you never know what's gonna happen. For over a million dollars worth of coverage for less than a dollar a day, 
and only taking 10 minutes to sign up, it's a no-brainer. So put on your dad pants, your mom pants, do the responsible thing, cover your family, and know that they will be taken care of, and you don't have to be like, ah, with dealing with the, uh, trying to figure this stuff out. Fabric's got it figured out for you. Check out that link in the description below. Go to meetfabric.com slash Fowler. That's M-E-E-T fabric.com slash Fowler. And let's get on with the adventure. All right. Whew. It's nice in here. It's like the perfect temperature even with the door open. I love it. <clears throat> oh, coals are looking good. Nice hot coals. Doesn't look like that's gonna fit. Dear diary, I love winter and snow. We don't get it much anymore. The little snowflakes are getting smaller every year and accumulate even less. The average snowflake is around the size of a penny if it's really coming down, and even that's a bit rare these days. But I read the other day that in 1887, somebody found a snowflake that was 15 inches in diameter. I mean, that's one big special snowflake. There hasn't been a special snowflake that big until just recently when Netflix came out with the show and put 10 special snowflakes into the wild to try to see if they could survive. Snowflake. A young person who's considered overly emotional? This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. I just can't do it. Because I'm vegan. No, you're not! <laughs> What do we got? got some eggs. No fish still, so <laughs> guess we're just gonna have to eat some bacon. Mm, got some little flatbreads, some onion, mushrooms. Well, despite the lack of fish, we're having fun. It's hard not to have fun when you're in the outdoors and you're burning some calories and you're working hard and you're feeling the feeling the burn. And, take mine out. I didn't ask Amos and he's off on a little nature walk himself I think so uh, I'll uh, get his to a crisp or medium crisp. I don't know what it is about people with you know not liking wiggly bacon. You're gonna kill someone you can't serve raw bacon. All right, that'll have to do. A little bit of shell, but that's a lot of shell. Bacon, and then mushrooms, and 
some onions. Give them that beautifully fried egg right there. A little dash of some seasoning that we're not ready to tell you what it is yet. Oh yeah, tell me that doesn't just make your mouth water, huh? Oh. Hey! Let's go see what Amos thinks. All right, this is quite the feast for out here. Yeah. You know? It is. All right, Lord, we need a fish. <laughs> Thank you for the breakfast, but we need a fish. Amen. <laughs> if we don't do good, then we can always go to some other lake. This isn't a, uh, you know, 30 day survival challenge situation where we can only eat what you catch and cook. We're just trying to, you know, experience more, do more stuff, have adventure as much as possible, you know, and, and try to catch and cook something each day. Yesterday we failed at that, and today we caught some bacon and eggs and, <laughs> and some flatbread and, uh, you know, he got up early and ground the millet and made us this flatbread. <laughs> On a stone. Mm-hmm. Mmm. How do you like your bacon? Mm. Not too crisp. Not too I crisp? Want, yeah, I like... You like a little wiggle? No, not too much wiggle. No wiggle? Oh, <laughs> not I, too much wiggle. I made it, I made it regular, like... Nice. You know, cook no, like that's a, pretty good. Yeah. You can still see them, yeah. Yeah. Oh, delicious. Yum. Well, hopefully that gives us the energy. To hike way out there mm -hmm. and try it. had the snow dog for like two weeks but it rolls right over anything it's a little bit funky when it comes to moving around in the woods you need a nice little piece of trail but once you get out onto the ice the thing cruises and you can pull like three sleds with three people you'll see as the series goes on we use it more and more it's so capable honestly when i throw more stuff on it i don't even notice a weight difference in its ability to drag a load around i've had a snowmobile before and i love this thing so much more than a snowmobile i don't think i'll ever get a snowmobile again unless i get into some sort of a touring thing where i want to go longer distances and it's pretty versatile you're supposed to be able to use it during the summertime so i'm looking forward to that They should have been in here. That's that first corner of that square I was thinking we could work. Over there is 42, right here, 31, and then there's a little ridge right here. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of open water on the lake less than a week ago, so we got to be very careful where we go. So far, there's been about 10 inches of good ice, but that's all right here in front of my camp. But that's some pretty shallow water, 17, 18, 19 feet. We've seen some marks and we've seen some perch on the aqua view, but I really want to get up the lake and hit some of these deeper holes or little plateaus, something that would hold some bass or crappie in that area, as well as checking out the shallows in front of some of these stream heads, which should have some trout. That's, that looks like the reflection that looks like something mm -hmm. yeah see that's moving yep, that, that could be a school of like uh yeah, perch or something going on right there you know yeah, yeah let's let's move on and see where if we can find one of the features and if it if it has something doing all right so where we really want to be is a little further up but we see like a crack or something and it's like looks like it's wet so i'm gonna keep checking and have a most follow Hold the bar out like this, just in case. <laughs> I don't know if it's just a really icy patch and the wind blew it clear, or it was a wet patch the other day. That's pretty thin. That's thinner. That's two and a half, three inches. Let's go. Uh, let's go that way.
Not good. So maybe we should spin it around and go back out there. All right. Yeah, where they had that first hole. Okay. We saw stuff on there. We didn't move around in that little area. Got a little fish on the fish dar on the garment. I'll throw a little waxy on there and see if I can't get down there and hook him before he takes off. Come on, fishy, fishy. Ah. Messing around with the world's tiniest little fishes. That thing was only marking as big as my uh, lure. I felt a little bite. It's, I have to say I'm feeling a little discouraged. I, I feel like I bought the Dead Sea here. It was the ancient Romans who named this place the Dead Sea. No fish or plants live in its mineral rich waters. Of course, the good places we can't seem to get to. We drove all around and I kept poking the, putting the pike in and what was open is now only three three and a half inches and maybe even two and a half inches in spots where I was poking through one poke. I'm like waving Amos off, you know, let's not go there for now. So maybe by the end of the week we'll be able to go over there to those spots and tomorrow we're just gonna have to go somewhere different. But we do keep seeing little marks here and I've caught a white perch here already. <sighs> Might be eating. Might be eating bait for dinner. <laughs> Yikes. Man, there was a half an inch of ice there and that was just two and a half hours ago we set that. Best part of uh, not doing this alone is uh, you guys can team up and divide and conquer. I'm still looking for the fish. Um, this is kind of a bigger, flatter area. The most since we saw some sign there, put in uh, some traps. I just can't seem to find where the exact spot of the fish is though, which is frustrating. And the feeling that they are over there is like, ugh, oh, and can't get to them right now. Fishy, fishy, fishy. Come on, baby. Come on. Please, please be a fish. Please be a fish. Please be a fish. Man, it must have ran for a while with it. I still haven't hit my knot. Oh, there's my knot. Unless it swam back towards the hole, I lost him. I don't feel a thing. Darn. Dang, doon, darny, doon, dang it. I sure like the cut of your gibberish. Cohen, doodly, 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 I saw it. It wasn't gone for long. It was not gone for, down for long. Uh, he banged up the minnow a little bit, but not too bad. All right, try again. I don't find any fishes here, I might have to eat a mouse. I think if a mouse was the main ingredient on Iron Chef, I'd do a rosemary and a peach glaze in a large oven, cook them at like 450 for about seven hours till the meat just falls <laughs> right off the bone. Hey buddy. That's disgusting. <laughs> 
It's making me hungry thinking about it. That... <laughs> no fishes. It's official. There's no fishes in the lake. I caught them all the other day. And even the ones I put back were eaten by something else, which was eaten by somebody's bird, pet bird, I don't know. Well, we didn't catch a fish. We got skunked. We got super <laughs> skunked. You know, if we were going after skunk, we would be the skunk kings. <laughs> yeah. um, honestly though, it's like we, we couldn't go to where we wanted to really check it. The ice was too thin. I didn't even really want to be walking where I was when I poked through a couple times. I was like, yeah. okay, I'm heading back. Yeah. Not good, right? It was like, I think it was like two and a half inches in a couple spots and I was like, okay, keep moving. Uh, so we couldn't go to where we really, really, really wanted. The fish that I did see here and there on the fish finder were few and far between. So I think we decided to go out to dinner. We got a lobster for Ramos because he's in Maine and I don't have my traps in the water so we can't go out there. <laughs> it's like negative 13 tonight. It is. I don't really want to go out and check my traps on a blowy day like that, my little boat. Haddock is uh, stuffed with crab. Stuffed with crab? <laughs> I, I just ordered wings. I guess. I was thinking about other things and Brussels sprouts with scallops and stuff. Oh, look at that. Mm. I'm landlocked in Indiana, so yeah. I'm trying the seafood for Maine. Yeah. Nice. All right. Say grace. Lord, thank you for this food and help us to get a fish tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, we're going to dig in. I'll tell you what this tastes like. Look at this. I got a yummy scallop and... Uh, Mmm. Brussels sprouts with bacon. Super good. Thai wings. Here. Give them a try. Mmm. Oh. That's dangerous. That's so good. A sweet and spicy kind of thing. It was really cold, guys. Right now it's. 13 degrees because there is a big cold front coming. It's gonna be yeah below zero here in a couple of days. So we are talking about 30 to 40 degrees below zero. Arctic blast builds in from Maine all the way through New England into New York, Pennsylvania, and the Ohio Valley. Maybe by the end of our adventure we can go back to those spots that we wanted to and prove that what we predicted where the fish actually are on my lake is where they are catch them in the real spots, the real hot spots. It's like, is that a poncho that your arms go through here? Like, no, you pull those fruit, you know. I didn't know there was a beep for it. Wait, yeah. <laughs> you always crack away from you, so everybody else gets splashed. Gets, gets splashed. <laughs> okay, let me pull my <laughs> sleeves here. <laughs> yeah, we're in the splash zone now. Bend them backwards against each other. There you go. And you should oh, be able to, it there we go. pulls it out, and then you can just Oh, dip it. yeah. And then it, that's... Oh, that's what that's for. If, yeah, if you want. Or you just, I'm a troglodyte. Yeah, just go, just use your fingers. <laughs> I mean, it. Uh. I'm a troglodyte, so I <laughs> yeah. went with the hands. Totally. How is it? Oh, it's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's delicious. All right, there you go. Now break the, now just bend the tail off. Break it off and pull it free. There you go. Push right here? Yeah, push it and it all comes out through. Oh, hold on, I think. See that? What's that's that? the uh, the eggs. Oh, that's the raw. Cool. Yeah. So. You want to taste the raw? Yep. Oh wow. Right. Yeah, that's got some flavor on it. Oh yeah, that's the best bite right there. Mmm. <laughs> that amazing. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's delicious, especially after all day in the ice, trying to catch fish, trying to catch food. <laughs> wow.
All right, we're gonna finish our meal without the camera, head back to the shelter, see if we can't get some rest, get on that fish tomorrow. All right, loading it up bedtime. There we go. So tomorrow, gonna try harder, go to a new place, take the snow dog with us and scoot out onto another lake and find a good spot. This is a spot that uh, Aaron knows about and Aaron's always got me on some, uh, he got me on the geese, he got me on the trout early this year when we went out for a trout early, so he's my uh, lucky charm. So we're gonna meet up with him, see if we can't get that fish, or a bunch of fish actually. We're gonna try to go after some crappie and some uh, northern pike, something big. I'm gonna bunk out. <sighs> All cozy in here. It's like 13 degrees outside, but uh, we're comfortable. And I'm not even in my bag yet. And I will see you guys in the next one tomorrow. Next episode. Owler, out.